always the best guest. And we are live, 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 this 16th of March 2015. And Martin Hatchell and I are chatting all about responsible travel, wildlife conservation, as well as uh, ukuleles and libraries. Martin, good morning. Good afternoon to you. Good morning. Good afternoon to you, Ron. It's, uh, it's, it's afternoon here uh, in South Africa on the southern tip. We are currently just waiting for a rainfall. It's starting to smell and feel like rain. Beautiful day here in Nisner. Beautiful. How are you? A reminder to everybody, these Hangouts are sponsored in part by Chocoluchi, the chocolate worth fighting for from Oaxaca, Mexico. Thank you, Lucia. So where were we in our last conversation, Martin? Well, we were talking to, or talking with, Greg Vacht, the CEO of Nice and Tourism. He was to have been with us tonight. He will still try and be here, but unfortunately he's been called off for an emergency meeting. And we were discussing what does the, what makes for ethical tourism and what, what sort of questions should the consumer be sensitized to asking when it comes to things like riding elephants or walking with lions or uh, taking photographs of people in their, in their villages, um, indigenous people. And uh, rattling our rattles, that's my traditional rattle. I have a bit of a collection of African musical instruments and my dog having a smell. Um, Rattling my rattle about about things that uh, that really bother us uh, and 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 deserve to be asked. Greg made the point this week. Um, I think you asked what 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 did you learn in in tourism school, and Greg made the point. What didn't you learn? And I think that's very important. I think that's and just as a sort of discussion point for where we can go with these with these uh, conservation and wildlife and responsible travel hangouts I think that's where we want to start asking um, questions what should we be looking for to make sure that our tourism experiences are ethical we um, also sort of need to get beyond the point where we're just talking about things and where we're actually starting to share information and um, the one point I want to make perhaps a little later in our conversation is to discuss Engage RT 2015 which is a one day conference that's coming up on the 29th of May in Muscle Bay and around the world on, on, on the net. And that'll be at the end of May? Yeah, 29th, Friday the 29th of May from South Africa time, 8.30 in the morning till 12, and then resuming again from 3 o'clock till 6. And then after that, the uh, 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 Mossel Bay's local produce evening, and uh, that with the um, Caravelle Awards, which is an uh, excellence in tourism awards, which will include the uh, um, category excellence in tourism marketing on the web. Well, that, Hopefully that, we'll that, get... that is a mouthful, and, and I just wanted to show this screen. Do you remember seeing this picture of ecotourism? Yes, I did. I saw it. I think you tweeted it earlier, or you Oh, I tweeted it, it earlier. Facebook? I tweeted this earlier, and we've been taking a look at this for a couple of years now, of the, the slow and steady decline of ecotourism. And uh, we'll chat a little bit about that in our chats as well. Uh, you know, for me, ecotourism should be the word that says responsible travel and wildlife conservation. Mm. But tourism has when, become when, a when even I don't want to use it as kind of the brand of a of a hangout topic. I think yeah. we really need to be looking at well wait a minute, where did you know ecotourism get off the high? It got it got <laughs> hijacked. I think it got hijacked in the same way that the word green has got hijacked. Enviro has become hijacked. You know, you know, you now get a, a sort of ecotourism diesel locomotive 
driving tour, game game watching tour to go and, and see as many of the big five as you possibly can, as quickly as can, with as much diesel thrown into the air as possible, as much noise as possible, and get the photographs. And that's what ecotourism has become. And I, I there's there's no engagement. Um, I don't think there's any real value. Um, well, you know, again, again, the question is, you know, we're bantering over words when we don't necessarily mm -hmm. have to agree on a specific meaning. Yeah. Um, and the question really is, well, what are people looking for and what are they asking for? And in one of my conversations with uh, a colleague this week, who I'm hoping to bring into the Hangout, uh, you know, he was saying, you know, we thought that ecotourism would, you know, would have an effect on mainstream tourism. And we thought it would have a positive effect, but we haven't seen it yet. You know, are we all going to be just dissatisfied with the tourism and the tourism sector, the conservation sector for really failing to connect? I am. I am. I mean, we should be so much further along the curve here. You know, I think we've mentioned it in an earlier hangout on this subject that I can only think of three or four. Uh, responsible tourism um, products in South Africa that I would really strongly recommend. And interestingly, only one of them is a wildlife tourism experience. The other three are all human tourism experiences. In other words, engagement with people, communities. Um, I can name them. Skrutbos is the is the wildlife experience, and then in Cape Town, um, the coffee bean routes and uh, oh, oh wait, a time second, wait a second, wait a second, that's way too fast. Yeah. Uh, who is number one? Skrutbos. Skrutbos is a nature reserve down between here and Cape Town, uh, which has really gone out of its way uh, to make sure that. Uh, it is an integration between the environment, the community, and visitors. What do you uh, do? And at the same time, do with like a tourist slash visitor? There's so many. Um, I, I think let's just go and have a look at the at the website there. Um, let's. Uh, if I can find how to get onto the website at the moment, um, Google Chrome, open up, please. Okay. Uh, Remember, machines sense fear. Be confident. See, they've got the Hurt Post Foundation. Uh, that's the first one that comes up. Responsible tourism, Hurt Post. Things to do, responsible tourism. Uh, hang on, hang on. I'm getting there and I'm just uh, share my screen. Uh, where are we? Screen share. Right. Share. Right, you are screen sharing. So, hey, Grippos hey, hey, hey. is right. a private nature reserve. I love this sowing the, the seeds of human potential, health, wealth, and community coherence growing in the future. Uh, there's so much that they that they are um, that they're doing uh, for for themselves, for their community, and, and for their visitors. Um, so, ooh, they actually talk the, about responsible tourism. They do. Your visit to Red Bus is about much more than just five-star accommodation and eco-adventures. It's about making a real and effective contribution to the unique national environment of the Walker Bay region and its people. Walker Bay is down closer to Cape Town than where we are now. Um, so let's look at the... Uh, They've got green futures, growing the future, youth development program, future trees, social responsibility tour. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, experience, plan your stay. I think that's the one. Itineraries, functions. So we go to itineraries. Find out how to make the most of your time at Critforce with our suggested itineraries. Um, Yeah, classic. We put together a collection of curated experiences to help you decide how to make the most of your precious time. All right, all right. That, that's enough of the corporate speak. 
What else do you like? I'm, about? I'm getting I'm getting a little frustrated with this with this website because yeah, wait, wait, once again, tell me, tell me more your story about him. I unfortunately only know Kurt Borst from um, how do I unscare? Oh, there you go. I know Kurt Borst only from uh, from from reading extensively about it, um, and and uh, I have met the people. At, at shows and things, so I, I can't talk about my, my own experience. Um, okay, all right, no, no, that's fine. And then number two, you said, I, can, we go to, can we go to your number two, or do you have anything to say about Bachelor number one? I just find that what I have, I, I, didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't enjoy the experience of their website right now, but all the things that I have read, written by themselves and by, by um, uh, um, what's the word? Independent people has has made me convinced that that Kripos is one of the responsible tourism products that we can easily um, promote as a responsible tourism product. And also, I'm sad that Greg isn't here because he does have personal responsibility. Personal. Um, all right, all right. L moving okay, on. Can we go to Rotunda? Coffee boot. Was it coffee house roots? Coffee House Roots. Well, yeah, I think you should talk about Coffee House Roots because didn't you, the Coffee Beans Roots? Didn't you spend time with them? I on did the, spend uh, time with them. Okay, so let's hear your experience. And, and that's Ian. Because I'd like to hear your experience. Is that, is that you Ian saw them or as Ian or uh, how do you pronounce yes. this? Yeah, Ian. What's his yeah, last? His name catch me, but Ian, yeah. But, Tell us uh, about your experience. Well, I was just, I was, you know, again, if it's about personality, if it's about vision. Um, if it's about integrity, you know, what I saw in my encounter with Ian was just first rate. And hmm. whether it was uh, climbing a bit of Table Mountain or going on the Jazz Safari night, I mean, these were exceptional experiences. And yeah. as tourism services, offerings would go, probably, you know, among the very best I've ever seen in the world, amazing. Yes. So you know, would I be you know a bigger, bigger fan if I were there? Certainly, because again, it's where I see innovation. It's where I see the walking, the talk. What, um, well, what, in, what the was the down. innovation? What was the innovation? How did you see the? Well, the jazz safari, for example, taking people you know, into the townships, into the suburbs, we should be calling it, um, and having your dinner with a family and then going on to progressive rounds of, of cocktails afterwards. And it was, yeah. you know, it wasn't, I mean, it took the a whole idea of a booze and cruise trip. What do we love about it? The booze. Hmm. But it modified it in a way that, you know, you weren't rip-roaring drunk at the end of the night. Um, you know, it was much more about the cultural immersion and the experiences, the conversations with the artists, the people. Um, you know, everybody had, you know, these were entertainers. These were jazz, you know, fine jazz musicians, singers. Um, and the idea that you could meet with them in their homes, wonderful. If you could eat with them, I mean, I remember this buffet of South African delicacies. It was, you know, sort of kind of as a, as a buffet style, wonderful. I mean, again, I can only imagine how that could be applied, for example, in Oaxaca, Mexico, where I was living. If you had people who really could appreciate the conviviality, I think that's what really sold me on that. You know, I, you know, definitely in my top ten of the whole world. Moving on. <laughs> Utando, Utando, I'm going to share my screen again. Um, this is a project that um, I is it's run by a fellow called um, uh, where's my where's my brain um, it's it's run by a fellow called James Fernie James, James Fernie who is uh, 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 if I remember correctly. Um, a qualified lawyer who decided that uh, he wanted to be involved in more interesting and rewarding work, and uh, he um, has started this touring company which visits 
it's easy, he calls it philanthropic cultural tours. Uh, they visit various projects in various underprivileged township areas of South Africa, I mean of, of Cape Town. Um, township being our sort of term for underprivileged areas, slum areas. And um, it's, an, it's a bit of a throwback to apartheid. I, I heard you saying earlier, changing it from township to suburb, and we should be calling it. Um, and these, these tours, um, you can see at the bottom of the page here, they visit an enormous data, and each, I mean, your, the tour that you go to make will probably only visit three or four of these projects. But look at the number of different projects there. Abalimi Bezakaya is an urban agricultural program where they are literally producing huge amounts of food in very small areas. Um, the Amy Beal Foundation, Amy Beal was, was, was an American woman who came to South Africa and was murdered while she was here and her family have set up this foundation for youth development. Um, I have been with them to, uh, let me just read this, um, the Ezekiel Cooking School uh, where they um, showed us how they are teaching people to become chefs. I've been with them to the Hout Bay Music Project. Amazing. Um, they're teaching these kids from these this underprivileged uh, township um, how to play on classical instruments and producing really good quality classical music. Um, and the amazing thing is that the kids don't get to take, well, when I was there, the kids didn't get to take the instruments home. So they had to come to the, uh, the club where they were practicing, and they had, uh, they had to practice, they, they couldn't you know, practice at home, and yet they were producing this amazing uh, classical music, and as, having played music in my younger days, it's not easy music to play. Um, I went to the Akapa Dance School, um, Jikileza Dance Company, and I think there was one other, uh, it could have been Kumbalani Center. Oh, it was teabag designs. The, uh, I went to the tea bag, where they are literally teaching people how to make things out of dry tea bags. Like hey, uh, Martin, can, can you turn the screen? Can no. you change the screen or, or turn it off? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to unshare my screen now because we've. Uh, it. Um, what do you think we'll be calling sharing and unsharing in ten years? I'm going to bet it's not sharing and unsharing. Uh, I. I don't know. <laughs> People in 10 years are going to say, oh, that's so 2015, and they're not going to say it in a nice way. No, but they never say But I mean, you know, the, by then we'll be the older generation. So we're trying to, yeah, each tour is made specifically to visit various of those foundations, and then the money from the tour, a large proportion of the money from the tour goes to helping those foundations with what they're doing. But the amazing thing about the tour was the engagement that we had. We, um, we met people at these projects. Um, we were able to talk to them. There was no... Uh, I didn't feel, and I, as I have, on, I've done township tours in South Africa before, and I've always felt uncomfortable. Because here, you're going into almost a neutral space, but not a neutral space. The neutral in that it's not a person's home that you're going to. I mean, you know, I, I worry about a, a township tour that goes into an orphanage. It's poor tourism. It's, you know, let's go and have a look at how the poor kids live. You're going into a person's home, whereas here you're going into a community center or you're going into a sports club where people are getting together for a specific um, reason and they're happy to show off the uh, project that they're working on and you can um, can engage with them on, on, on various different levels. You can try your hand at it or you can talk to them about it or it, it's it's a <laughs> you, you go into if you go into somebody's village or into somebody's home without I mean, as a, if you go in as a group, it becomes zoo tourism, and, and uh, human zoos the worst kind of zoo. Not that I mean all zoos are bad, but human zoos are the worst. 
that that they are. So, is there is there a number four on your list? How many how how many were you going up to? I think let's stick let's let's stick with those three. Let's stick with those three. Because I think it gives the it gives the kind of broad um, thing. Well, well, here's my challenge to you, Martin. Martin, here's my challenge to you. See if we see if we can uh, invite these folks to join us next Monday. We could try. I mean, I think we can try, and uh, you know, we should have the most engaging and provocative conversation about South Africa travel here on the web. Hmm. Oh, the ideas. So the question oh. is the 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 I'm um, not the question the 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 challenge if you want it is why are there so few examples that we want to name why are the few doing it correctly and the majority doing it incorrectly is it because the few know what they're doing or are prepared to take risks or is it because the majority are just following everybody else's leads and believing that what they're doing is offering the consumer, which is the visitor, the experience they think the consumer wants? Do we know what the consumer wants in terms of responsible travel? And the big question on my mind then, because we asked, you, you showed that graph of ecotourism earlier, does the consumer want to get beaten over the head all the time? You must do the right thing. You must do the right thing. Or do they want to just mindlessly go ahead and enjoy themselves? But I don't. Okay, here. Wait a minute. You're going to get on my bad side, Martin. Oh, my bad side. Because to me, that's not a conundrum. I think you can do the right thing and have a good time. And yes, yeah, I'll make all this justification, but. No. I believe that you know the, the the examples that we just mentioned are really great examples. The other question is, well, why don't we hear more about them? You know, why isn't and again, I think why, you're, why, you're, why are the tourism boards, for example, promoting their big five instead of their big fifty thousand? You know, they're promoting you know here are the most common routes. When what we know is that the long tail really does exist in travel, and people are looking not for abstract concepts like ecotourism. But rather specifics. You know, I want to go to a. You know, I want to visit this community without being exploitative. I want to. Okay. I, I want to support the people who are doing the most good in the community. You know, these are the. You know, these are the questions that people really are asking, and they're they're finding answers. The question may or may not be the right answer, but you know, they find what's good for them, and if what we can do as agents of change of, of being provocateurs is to grease the wheels so that the locals have a better way of one understanding what's happening to them and second seeking out examples across the world that might have some applicability now what I you know again South a what what South Africa has is this abundance of culture and abundance of um, personal engagement and experiences and in many ways this is just kind of not rising to the top of brand awareness that I think it deserves uh, in South Africa. But what happens when some people start looking at it and establishing these, again, global connections? And it's not going to depend on me or you. You know, it's, it, you know, we may have connected some people through this conversation and through other hyperlinks and retweets, but at the end of the day, it belongs to these people. And that, again, is where we should be focusing our energies, how we are engaging the locals. You know, one to really take, you know, to, to get into this, and second to, to remind people how, you know, poorly informed we are on the other side of the world about South Africa. You you you're touching on a very very important subject, which I I saw mentioned earlier this week or over the weekend. Visitors don't think of themselves as falling into, I and I I believe this. Somebody was saying that visitors don't see themselves as falling into the neat boxes that tourism marketing agents, agencies want them 
to believe that they are. That this is an eco-tourist and that's a wine tourist and that's a cultural tourist and that's an evolution tourist. I think you can be all those things on the same trip and more. And I think, going back to where our conversation began, I don't know if semantics is the right word, but I just think people are being, uh, 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 they're getting, um, it's a kind of fatigue. They're getting tired of being told to do the right thing. They're getting tired of being told that they are this kind of tourist or that kind of tourist. On the one hand, but on the other hand, what is wrong with the tourism chain, the tourism channel, the tourism web, if you want, that so few people are producing products of the quality of Kripos, Utanda, and coffee bean roots. Well, all of this, all of this change, all of this changes it. Um, look, let's wind up our hangout. Okay. I'll be happy and uh, and invite people back next Monday, same same time, same channel, and and we will see. As I say, here's our challenge. Let's get a couple more people and, and focus in on this topic and and hear what they have to say. Indeed, I just want to mention one other thing before we do. There is one other product that I should have mentioned, and of which I'm actually very proud because I have a small part to play in it, and I didn't even think of it. And that is the point of human origins experience at Marcel Boyce Pinnacle Point Caves. www.humanorigin.co.za uh, At the caves, uh, the archaeology of the caves was first uncovered in the late 1990s by a couple of guys called uh, Peter Nielsen and Jonathan Kaplan who were doing a survey of the land on which Pinnacle Point Beach and Gulf Estate now exists and they found uh, uh, that the caves had been occupied by Middle Stone Age people. Peter called in Professor Curtis Marion of the Arizona State University School of Human Origins and uh, they started, they did a test excavation in 2000 and basically since then it's become the biggest scientific project of its kind in the world. It turns out that people have been living in those ca had lived in those caves over a period of 120,000 years, and it's, it's to, and it's produced the earliest evidence for modern human behaviour. And uh, as I said earlier, I just finished reading this fabulous book by Martin Meredith, Born in Africa, which brings us up. And we've lost your audio, Martin. Oh, what did you what did you touch when you brought the book up? Yeah. I, Sorry, I, I, I touched my mute button. So this hey, book brings hey, you up to 172,000 years ago when... Uh, uh, huh? Are you, am I, am I with you again? I'm understanding. Sorry. Uh, okay. Peter Nielsen uh, and other people that he works with recognized two or three years ago that people wanted access to this project. They wanted to find out more because Really, I mean, everybody on on the earth today stems from a small population of a few, perhaps only 100 or perhaps 1,000 individuals who lived in Africa at that time. And this is where they lived, in, in the area around which I live now, um, the Southern Cape. And people are fascinated by getting back to and finding out about that sort of thing. So it's like... Together so, so, wait, wait. So, so it's like me... So it's like... Mean when, 170,000 years ago. What wind? Mean when, like meanwhile, but I guess uh, it'd be mean when. Mean when. <laughs> well, 162,000 years ago. That's why we talk about 162,000 years of holidays in Mossel Bay. Peter Not and. 163? Uh, no, 162. Um, People and uh, Peter and a couple of, of, of other people, like the Homeowners Association, uh, realized that people wanted access to these caves, and together with the uh, with 
with Curtis's project and others, they've created this point of human origins experience where you can now go and you engage with Peter, discuss what they've found and visit the caves. And it is a small, and this is, this is where Anna Pollock's thinking comes in. It's a small experience. It doesn't run every day. Peter's unable, because he's also a consulting archaeologist, he's unable to do uh, tours every day or all day. He does a, a limited number of tours for a limited number of people. But it is a true engagement. And I think it, it, it falls into the, the criteria of, of what we're talking about for responsible travel. Beautiful. Well, it certainly does. Um, we're going to wind down our hangout here or go for the next three hours and have brunch and it's, it's, yeah. or the late night snack. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's the hangout to have from one food event to the next food event. Uh, and with we'll Oprah, chat. of course. Um, well, but we will line this down here, and we'll chat more next Monday at this very same time, very same channel. And Martin, many thanks. Always great to chat Thank with you. Me.